Self-esteem is not a value that once achieved is maintained automatically. Like every other human value, including life itself, it can be maintained only by action. In abandoning the will to think, one abandons the will to live. Racism is the lowest, most crudely form, primitive form of collectivism. It is the notion that ascribing moral, social, or political significance to a man's genetic lineage, the notion that a man's intellectual and characterological traits are produced and transmitted by his internal body chemistry, which means, in practice, that a man is to be judged not by his own character and actions, but by the characters and actions of every collective of ancestors. Racism is a doctrine of, by, and for brutes. It is, a barn, it is a barnyard or stock farm version of collectivism appropriate to a mentality that differentiates between various breeds of animals, but not between animals and men. Value is that which one acts to gain or keep. Virtue is the act by which one gains or keeps it. The three cardinal values of the objectivist ethics, the three values which together are the means to end, to end the realization of one's ultimate value, one's own life, are reason, purpose, self-esteem, and with their three corresponding virtues, rationality, productiveness, and pride. Productive work, oops. Nothing can corrupt and disintegrate a culture or a man's character as thoroughly as does the precept of moral agnosticism. The idea that one must never pass moral judgment of, on others, that one must more, be morally tolerant of anything, that the good consists of never distinguishing good from evil. A precondition of a civilized society is the bearing of physical force from social relationships, thus establishing the principle that if men wish to deal with one another, they may do so only by means of reason, by, discuss by discussion, persuasion, and voluntary, uncoerced agreement. To pronounce moral judgment is an enormous responsibility. To judge, one must possess an unimpeachable character One need not be omniscient or infallible, and it is not an issue of errors of knowledge. One needs an unbreached integrity. That is, the absence of any indulgence of conscious, willful evil. Observe how many people evade, rationalize, and drive their minds into a state of blind stupor in dread of discovering that those they deal with, their loved ones, or friends, or business associates, or political rulers, are not merely mistaken, but evil. Observe that this dread leads them to sanction, to help, and to spread the very evil whose existence they fear to acknowledge. When might is opposed to right, the concept of might can only have one meaning, the power of brute physical force, which in fact is not a power, but the most hopeless state of impotence. It is merely the power to destroy, the power of a stampede of animals running amok. The principle of individual rights is the only moral base of all groups or associations. A nation that violates the rights of its own citizens cannot claim any rights whatsoever. Individual rights are not subject to public vote. The majority has no right to vote away the rights of the minority, the smallest minority being the individual. 
is society that robs an individual of the product of his effort or enslaves him or attempts to limit the freedom of his mind or compels him to act against his own rational judgment, a society that sets up a conflict between its edicts and requirements of man's nature is not, strictly speaking, a society, but a mob held together by institutionalized gang rule. An irrational society is a society of moral cowards, of men paralyzed by the loss of moral standards, principles, and goals, but since men have to act so long as they live, such a society is ready to be taken over by anyone willing to set its direction. The initiative can come only from two types of men, either from the man who is willing to assume the responsibility of asserting rational values, or from the thug who is not troubled by questions of responsibility, such as happy cabby. Productive work is the central purpose of a rational man's life, the central value that integrates and determines the hierarchy of all of the values. Reason is the source, the precondition of his productive work. Pride is the result. Rationality is a man's basic virtue, the source of all his other virtues. Man's basic vice, the source of all his evils, is the act of unfocusing his mind and the suspension of his consciousness, which is not blindness, but the refusal to see. The virtue of rationality means the recognition and acceptance of reason as one's only source of knowledge, one's only judge of values, and the one's, one's only guide to action. It means total commitment to a state of full conscious awareness. The virtue of productiveness is the recognition of the fact that productive work is the process by which man's mind sustains his life, the process that sets man's free, man free from the necessity to adjust himself to his background as all animals do, and gives him the power to adjust his background to himself. The virtue of pride is the recognition of the fact that as man must produce the physical values he needs to sustain his life. So he must acquire the values of character that make his life worth sustaining. That as man is being of self-made wealth, so he is a being of self-made soul. The basic social principle of the objectivist ethics is that just as life is an end in of itself, so every living human being is an end in himself, not the means to an end or the welfare of others, and therefore that man must live for his own sake, neither sacrificing himself to others, no sacrificing others to himself. To live for his own sake means that the achievement of his own moral, own happiness is man's highest moral purpose. Happiness is the state of consciousness which proceeds from the achievement of one's values.